research informed healthcare facilities design, integration of dissertation research with senior graduation project design by Ahmed Sharif, NG Tahir, Lorna El Mughazi, and Yasmina El Gibeli from the American University in Cairo in Egypt. Design of healthcare facilities requires special understanding of different users' needs. Healthcare buildings should support patient welfare and treatment and help reduce stress of staff. Patients and their families experience fear, anxiety, and stress. They also feel vulnerable due to the lack of control over the situation and the suspension of normal activities, as well as the uncertainty of outcomes. The unfamiliar environment of the hospital adds more stress to this experience as indicated by research work. The physical environment um, of a hospital can help reduce stress of patients and staff, can help reduce length of patients stay in hospital, and can help reduce the need for medication as indicated by these publications. Accordingly, healthcare design has changed its focus from designing places of curing to designing places for healing, from disease-centered design to people-oriented design. The teaching and learning challenges with healthcare facilities design are different from those of a typical building type. Students should be well acquainted with the special nature of these buildings and the unique status of their users. They need to be engaged with an in-depth research activity that allows them to appreciate the psychological and social environment of these users. Research activities of the typical design studio are not sufficient for capturing these conditions. This paper reports on an activity conducted in the Department of Architecture at the American University in Cairo. Students of the senior graduation project have chosen to conduct their dissertation research on a topic closely associated with their healthcare facility senior graduation design project. The first case study by Lorna El Morezi. For the case study, the main defined problem was that the focus of current emergency departments is centered on the advancement of their technologies. This leads to the neglect of the design of spatial elements that could affect the well-being, comfort, and stress of the main stakeholders. These stakeholders are the patients, their families, and the staff. Accordingly, this dissertation's main research objective was to identify architectural design considerations that activate a less stressful healing process and environment for patients and their families in emergency departments. The primary research question in this dissertation was to identify the factors in emergency departments that can generate a better, less stressful environment for patients and their families. Supplementary research points were used to further understand how to achieve this less stressful environment for the users. These included identifying current design models of emergency departments, understanding how current issues in emergency departments affect the well-being of their stakeholders, and finally, determining the effect of integrating stress-reducing elements on healthcare facilities users. The research methods used included looking into literature and performing field research. Firstly, from the literature, the main theoretical framework was defined, as well as an understanding of the current design standards in emergency departments from architectural theory. Secondly, the field research involved a structured interview with an architect currently redesigning an emergency department. In addition to that, a qualitative survey was sent to past visitors of emergency departments to further understand the current issues in Egypt. To conclude this dissertation, three main research findings were determined. The first one was the identification of the stress-inducing factors in emergency departments. These included crowding, privacy, and the incorrect location of staff workspaces. The second research finding was the classification of stress-reducing design elements used in current healthcare facilities. These are the integration of nature and the increase of natural daylight exposure. The third finding was from the qualitative survey results, which defined the current issues previous visitors had in the emergency department, and how they believed the addition of stress-reducing design elements would have influenced their visit.
Previous research findings were used to regenerate the design of a trauma hospital by transferring it from a stress-inducing setting to a hospital that focuses on reducing the overall traumatic stress of its stakeholders. Accordingly, the architectural concept was to enable stress-free healing through an interplay of biophilic design elements that were extracted from the research. These include the extensive integration of nature as an entity, as well as a direct source of light and natural views. According to the research findings, the main design driver was identified to be the increase of exposure of natural elements in the hospital to reduce the overall traumatic stress on its users. These elements include exposure to natural views by felic design and daylight exposure. Gardens were integrated throughout the hospital starting from the roof gardens moving into the central garden which included private zones, sensory healing and group integration. The following study illustrates in the subtraction of spaces to integrate internal and external gardens at all levels as a main design element in typical spaces such as waiting areas. This makes natural elements easily accessible by the different stakeholders in the hospital, aiding in reducing their overall traumatic stress. Maximizing daylight penetration was also used by creating large atriums incorporated throughout the hospital as seen in the sections, as well as adding glass bridges connecting critical zones overlooking the natural views as a method of further reducing stress on all users. Finally, the previous design considerations were implemented in the most critical zones in the trauma hospital. These zones are the surgical department and emergency department. In the surgical department, natural views were incorporated in the design of the operating rooms through the use of curtain walls overlooking the main central garden and Nile view. The curtain walls were treated using shuttering systems to ensure the integration of nature without the disruption of the main function of the operating rooms. In the emergency department, the most critical rooms, the resuscitation rooms, were designed to overlook a central green atrium to reduce the stress induced on staff. Additionally, the short-stay units had direct access to the central garden and Nile views. In conclusion, this further shows how the research findings were incorporated in all the stages of the design. The second case study by NG Tahir. The purpose of the dissertation was to find different ways to remodel the healthcare physical environment in order to help regulate the three parts of a person, body, soul, and mind. By focusing on designing a healing environment, a new typology of healthcare facilities that caters for patients and their families and the society in equal manners will be sought. Accordingly, the research objectives were to find ways into, in which cytogenesis could be achieved, spe uh, specifically focusing on how deploying the proportions of built green and aquatic environments could result in a more restorative and healing spaces for the user. The research questions were, would the deployment of water in built environments have a more positive impact on participants when compared with a green space? What is the potential dose response relationship of controlling the proportion of water visible in a user's scene? The research methodology in included a theoretical background research depicting current healthcare systems and the ways in which researchers have tried to transform the current paradigm of cardiac healthcare facilities design into a more holistic healing facility. Then a comparative study was conducted between the what happens in the context of Egypt in comparison with the UK, where the same methodology of a previous conduct previously conducted research work in the UK was repeated, but with the Egyptian population to identify the differences of perception due to cultural and social aspects. The, a qualitative study was conducted. A survey was carried out containing pictures of nine environments. Participants were asked to rate each, rate each of them based on a perceived restorative scale. Research findings indicate that introduction of green space has led to a higher preference rating. As the proportion of greenery increased in, in a scene, green versus built environment, the preference to the scene was rated more positively. Scenes with higher proportions of nature have resulted in higher scores which congregated 
to the understanding of green space's positive healing effect evident in literature. Built environments containing aquatic surroundings were rated more positively than single built environment. Participants preferred built environment with nature, either adding green or water to their typical built environments. The know-how collected in the research was translated into values embedded in the design of a cardiac care facility in the senior project design. And the thesis statement of such a project was to create a new generation of healthcare facilities that respond to the shift towards salutogenic design approach. This was specifically challenging in a facility like that of a cardiac care, where acute care happens and the challenge would be how to provide a holistic care environment for the body, soul, and mind. This environment would not only focus on patient care, no, it addresses also their families and engagement with the society and making them understand how to improve their way of healthy life. The architectural concept was based on provision of an active, physically engaging environment, adopting biophilic design approach, and use of a perforated design facility where we are emphasizing not only patient care, no, we are dealing also with community care and social inclusion. The perforated facility allows a main passageway that comes in from the waterfront to go across the facility to where the public interacts with the active components of the healthcare facility, like the gyms, like the well-being parts where you educate the society and also improve on their awareness of the need for a healthy lifestyle. The facility is placed on the, on the waterfront and ha has an engaged part with green and blue space where it is engaged with the waterfront and the greenery surrounding. The main causes of cardiac disease is lack of engagement in physical activity. That's why the first floor of the facility was designed to act as a node where you, uh, where, that lures people from outside the society to come in through the pedestrian ramp into the society this, this part encompasses healthcare-related activities catering for the body, soul, and mind while inhabiting patient uh, cl clinics as well. The level of porosity is gradually decreasing the higher we go up into the facility where the lower floors cater for the public, very porous facility, while the upper floors are more into the active sick and then the dormant sick, those in the ICUs and so on. So the level of quietness, level of activity, level of energy, level of exposure to the society gradually shifts from the lower floors up to the higher levels. The third case study by Yasmina El Ghaziri. Third case study, the initial problem definition that incited the choice of topic as well as of typology is the fact that healthcare facilities are dominantly addressed in a mechanized and pathogenic manner. This in turn obstructs the patient's ability to deal with the hardships of their disease. This led to the research objective, which is to examine the translation of the existential as well as the experiential connotation of suffering in breast cancer into architectural design elements. The main research question was how can the experiential connotation of suffering in breast cancer be translated into architectural design elements? This then evoked sub-questions which started with what are the existential and experiential connotations of suffering in, in breast cancer in the first place? What are essential design elements that foster a sense of comprehensibility? And to what extent is a sense of comprehensibility achieved through the breast cancer care model in Egypt? Research methodology comprised of four steps. It typically started with a philosophical and theoretical background to deduce the main themes and concepts relevant to the existential notion of suffering. 
and then it moved into architectural theory to translate the philosophical and existential background into design criteria, and then into qualitative research, which was conducted through observational analysis and semi-structured interviews to evaluate the extent to which sense of comprehensibility is incorporated in Bahia Foundation in Cairo, Egypt. Research findings were typically divided into two categories, those found through literature and those found through applied fieldwork. The former involves a deep understanding of the ontological perspective of suffering and the phases of suffering, and then the corresponding architectural approach and design qualities for its alleviation, whereas the latter gave insight into the sociocultural context of the user group as well as qualitative study results associated with examining and analyzing incorporation of a sense of comprehensibility in the Egyptian case study, Bahia Foundation for Breast Cancer. In true, the senior project we're dealing with was a breast cancer treatment center in rural Soheg. The thesis statement was to rehumanize the cancer care model through the choreography of an existential care and encounter that fosters inner coherence and wholeness. And the architectural approach is a phenomenological approach which portrays values of essentiality, fragility, and sensation in design through the manipulation of the ontological roots of architecture. Besides, I'll be discussing the following in my senior project. The first of which is the understanding of the suffering narrative and how it was reflected in architectural and sensory terms of the design. Second of which is the understanding of sociocultural context of the user group and how this was reflected in the design. Third of which is how I curated a sense of comprehensibility through wayfinding cues. The first Phase of suffering is having suffering, which is typically muted and is characterized by sudden disruption in the patient's life and their need for solitude and internalized reflection. The architectural stance in turn was that of stillness, directionality and shock absorption. Some of the cues through which the theme of stasis was manifested are the use of an essentially minimal architectural language, the use of still water elements, the incorporation of private seating nooks, monotony in spatial quality, and caution in transition. The second phase is being suffering, which is characterized by suffering that's lived in time and space, hence starts becoming externalized and showing the need for communion and compassion from an external entity. The architectural stance aims to evoke values of compassion and communion through sensory integration, dualistic expression, and spatial articulation. Some of the cues involved the incorporation of eccentric colors, the play of light and shadow, the use of spatial contrast, the use of waterfall elements, and the incorporation of motion and temporality in design. The third phase is transcended suffering, where reconciliation, reintegration, and spirituality are the main features. The dialogue starts becoming between the self, community, and nature, and so the architectural stance fosters reattunement to the rhythms of nature and the incorporation of communal and social spaces in attempt to reintegrate them into their cultural and social fabric. Research and applied fieldwork informed the understanding of architectural rituals that govern the Egyptian Falaha's perception of dwelling. And so, the rituals of the Nile, colors, geometry, as well as the sense of place as induced by the House of the Falah were thoroughly studied and reflected in the design, as shown by the illustrations. Wayfinding was an integral part of the design in an attempt to achieve a sense of comprehensibility. The most prominent wayfinding cues are as follows. First, all planes of initiation such as entrances, stairs, and circulation cores were marked by a certain color code. Second, the central spine connected three central courtyards. Each had a visual, distinct visual identity to ease the navigation around the building. And third, Sculpture vistas were incorporated to act as landmarks and to define the main project spines and main viewports. In conclusion, dissertation research has helped students improve the depth of their understanding of the values that should be embedded in the design of their projects. The research has helped students appreciate the sociocultural and other needs of the different user groups. Their projects focused on the creation of places for healing rather than places of treatment. A clear shift was observed in student projects from disease-centered design to people-oriented design. This is the list of references used in this presentation. Thank you. Please email 
us if you need any further information.